This is Ankur Patel, Systems Engineer at EMC, and today I'm going to show you how to reduce a DR1 in Bplex to a local volume. Uh, the reason why we want to do this is that we no longer need a distributed volume. We want to take it back down to a Vplex local volume, but we don't want to have to take an outage uh, to do so. Uh, so here is a distributed volume. You can see there's a, a VM on it. Uh, it's running on the RDC Vplex, and that's the name of the, the data store. Uh, if I go to the other node of this cluster, you can see that the data store exists there as well. And that's how you can see that it is a distributed virtual volume across both sites. So I kind of listed all the steps uh, to do this. So first thing we're going to do is move the workload uh, from the secondary site onto the primary. And in VMware, that just entails a, a vMotion. So I'm just going to vMotion the VM from the secondary site to the primary. And now we're going to go ahead and unmount the data store in vCenter. Next, what we're going to do is actually go ahead and remove the virtual volume from the storage view in the vplex. So essentially we're taking LUN access away from the host at the second site. Uh, so here's the name of the distributed virtual volume. If I go into the map, you can see uh, the full construct of that, uh, the name of the distributed volume, the name of the distributed device, um, all the extents and devices at both data centers and what storage arrays they're coming from. So I'll go into the secondary site and I will go into the storage view and go ahead and remove that volume from the storage view so that the host no longer can access that LUN at the target site. Uh, the primary site can still access the volume and again we move the workload to that primary site so everything is up and running. Uh, next we're going to go ahead and remove the virtual volume from the consistency group. So again going back to uh, the consistency group tab will go ahead and remove the distributed virtual volume from the consistency group. Now that it's out of the consistency group, we can go ahead and detach the mirror at the second site. So that's the command to go ahead and do it. Now I'll uh, describe that a little bit more. So I've opened up a putty session into the CLI and I will copy the command. So the way this command works is you give it the name of the distributed device. So this one's called device reduce C1. If I go back into the map, you can see where that name comes from. So again, it's the name of the distributed device. And second part of that is the actual device at the second site that we're removing. So device reduce C2 is the name of the device at that second site. So go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna go ahead and reduce it. So now it basically broke that mirror and now you're running everything at the primary site. Um, so now it's just a, a bunch of cleanup that we need to do. So if I take a look at the virtual volume now, what you will see is that we are only running on one leg, uh, but we still have this distributed, distributed device sitting there. Um, so what we're going to do is a collapse. So collapse on a distributed volume simply removes the distributed device and turns it back into just a, a local volume. So again, the name of the device matches the name of the device in the GUI of the distributed device. So now if I go back to the map, you'll see that what we have now is a remote export where the device is seen by both clusters, uh, one by cluster one, and then a remote export to cluster two. Uh, so if I look at the virtual volume, you'll see the visibility is global. So 
Site 2 can still see the volume, but it's a local volume that's remote export. And it created a new virtual volume called Device Reduce C2, which was the name of the device. Um, but now it's created a virtual volume at that second site. And you'll see that, just like the original device, it's created a, a remote export. So essentially what we have to do is remove this uh, Reduce C2 device. So here I will disable remote access for the DR1 reduce, so the primary volume. And now if we go ahead and look at it, you will see that it's now just a local volume, right? It's no longer seen by both clusters. And for that second virtual volume that it created for the device at the second site, uh, we can go ahead and, and delete it. So I'll go into the cluster 2 site, click on the virtual volume, and again remove its visibility to a local volume. And then I'll go ahead and tear it down. So tear down basically deletes the virtual volume, deletes the devices, and basically goes back to a, a storage volume. So now that that volume is gone, I no longer can see it. So if I go back into my vCenter, I can still see that the VM is up and running. Now it's just running on a single single site. If I go into the console, you can see that it's still up and running. I never went down during this entire process. And to finish up the cleanup, to get rid of this inactive volume, I'll just go and rescan the HPAs. And now you can see that the volume is, is gone. So that's the extent of how to reduce a DR1 to a local. Thank you for listening.